This is News 8 Now at 11. Tonight, days after a double murder, Rochester police continue to block access to the neighborhood where the crimes took place. Plus, the national average for gasoline jumps five cents in a couple of days. Could this be a sign of things to come? Good evening, everyone. You might be saying enough is enough. The cost of gas keeps going up and up and up. In fact, according to AAA, the national average for gas right now is $3.09 a gallon. That's a five cent jump in just the last two days. And in Rochester, we're paying even more than that. Jenny Chu joins us live at the Hess Station on Winton Road and East Avenue. Jenny. Kevin, the price for a gallon of regular unleaded gas here at the Hess Station on the corner of Winton and East is $3.27, and that's a penny from yesterday. And some experts say that hike could stay with us through Memorial Day. Many gas customers are feeling the pinch at the pump. That's because they're paying almost a dollar more than last year. Like a week in gas, probably spend like $40 probably every week. And this is just a car. Imagine trucks. According to AAA, Rochesterians are paying $3.27 for a gallon of regular unleaded. That's a penny more than yesterday, but a penny less a month ago and nearly a dollar more than last year. Many drivers say despite the rising gas prices, they're more willing to cut back in other places than cut back on driving. You got to drive. It's a necessity. That's why they know that if they move gas prices up, we still got to drive, so we're going to pay it regardless. What's the choice? I mean, you're not going to trade in your vehicles every time they increase the gas prices. So you just have to drive more judiciously, use it, carpool, and do everything you can to minimize gas use. Kevin and Maureen, I spoke to another customer earlier today, and she says she buys gas 10 bucks at a time, and that's because she can't afford to pay for a full tank. She drives so much, she has to pay 40 to $50 a week at the gas station. Reporting live in Rochester, Jenny Chu, News 8 Now. Thank you, Jenny. Tonight, Rochester police continue to watch the neighborhood where two teenagers were gunned down earlier this week. 15-year-old Damari Smith and friend Brent Coley were found shot to death at Wilkins Street in Frederick Park Tuesday night. News as Matt Malloy says officers want to send a message to the drug culture in that neighborhood. Rochester police are hoping their 24-hour presence will help solve this crime and ease the fears of a shaken community. And we want to send a message that's very clear. If you have these types of heinous crimes take place, the police will be there, will be very visible. And they remain visible more than 48 hours after two teens were gunned down inside what police say was a drug house. Chief Moore says time is of the essence. Time's very critical in terms of witness identification. Uh, and I think uh, the, the sooner that you can get the individuals in and get a statement from them as far as what they observed, it's critical. Police still don't know who is leasing the Wilkins Street home where the shooting occurred. Another reason officers remain on scene tonight. So having the officers have an opportunity to contact individuals coming into the area, uh, asking them quite frankly if they have inf information about what happened. Police say they will stake out this street for the next few days, hoping someone will come forward with information that could help them solve these two homicides. Matt Malloy, News 8 Now. Thanks, Matt. 15-year-old Damari Shaw was a potential witness in the murder of James Slater. Slater, you remember, was a well-known community activist who was gunned down in October while he was walking home from a neighborhood meeting. It is unclear what Shaw knew about Slater's murder, but Monroe County DA Mike Green says there's absolutely no evidence of a connection between Shaw's murder and his status as a potential witness in Slater's murder. Beyond telling you that he was a potential witness um, and that I have no evidence to connect it to, there really isn't anything else I can say about either of them. Meanwhile, the two men charged in Slater's death are set to go to trial in April, and Green says he does not expect those trials to be delayed because of the death of Shaw. Sad news tonight from the world of horse racing. Late today, the longtime voice of the Finger Lakes racetrack passed away. Sports director John Kutchko is here to tell us more about Ross Morton. John? Yeah, Kevin, a legendary announcer, Ross Morton. He was the Finger Lakes track announcer there since the track's inception 
in 1962. Called over 60,000 races there. Morton was legendary in horse racing circles, died late last night. Was network quality and frequently called races for various radio networks across America. This was from a free feature we did with Ross back in 1994. He sustained a massive stroke last weekend, died last night in Hollywood, Florida, where he spent his winners. What else? calling races. Ross Morton was 74. Trust me when I say he was one of the all-time greats when it came to track announcing at horse racing events. I just talked to him back in November three months ago. He looked great and I will tell you this when they open the season at Finger Lakes it will not be the same without Ross Morton behind the microphone. In the 8 Sports Plex, I'm John Kutchko. Back to you. Thanks, John. A lot more on Ross Morton on our website, by the way, at rochesterhomepage.net. Now Scott's going to tell us about the commute to work tomorrow. Here he is with your first look at the forecast. Yeah, thank you very much, Kevin, and good evening to you. It's a cold night out there right now. we got numbers in the teens and low 20s area-wide. There they are, 22 in the city, 22 in Penyan. Some colder weather where the skies are clearest. That is north of us, and you'll see that now over the last eight hours on our satellite and radar. There are some clear skies in southern Ontario, a milky moonlit sky for us, and some slight snow just sitting right down here near Jamestown. This is primarily going to go east for the overnight tonight, so it's not going to be a big deal. Tomorrow morning's commute should be mainly snow-free. Tomorrow evening, mainly snow free as well. Just some very light snow, especially south. This will not be a big deal out there for Western New York. What is ahead for the weekend and beyond? Ups and downs. Nothing new here, Maureen. That's coming up in a few. All right, thanks, Scott. In campaign 08 news, Democrats Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama debated tonight in Texas, and there was a telling moment at the end. Some say Clinton's campaign is on the rails now, that she needs to win Texas and Ohio to stay in the race. Well, tonight, after the fireworks and the back and forth of the debate, Clinton took time out to say this. No matter what happens in this contest, and I am honored, I am honored to be here with Barack Obama. I am absolutely honored. And, you know, whatever happens, we're going to be fine. Obama is ahead in the delegate race. The Texas and Ohio primaries are on March 4th. Republican presidential candidate John McCain is denying he had an inappropriate relationship with a lobbyist. A New York Times article out today suggested that McCain gave special treatment to lobbyist Vicki Eisman several years ago when McCain chaired the Senate Commerce Committee. McCain having a press conference today with his wife says Eisman was a friend, but he never had a romantic relationship with her. A teenager from Fairport's in big trouble tonight, accused of burglary. 16-year-old Austin Engel is a junior at Fairport High School. He was arrested after he was seen running from a home on Hogan Road and is reported to have told investigators he went inside looking for money. Engel was also accused of burglarizing at least two other homes on that same street. He is out on bail tonight. In Wayne County, a social worker is accused of raping two women in his care. 44-year-old Antonio Ojeda is a case manager for Wayne County Behavioral Health. Two women have accused Ojeda of having unwanted sexual contact with them. Ojeda is behind bars in the Wayne County Jail. The Duke lacrosse players who were wrongly accused in a rape scandal are taking their case to federal court. One of the players is Mike Catalina of Webster. He's a junior at Duke. Both he and his mother along with other players and their families, filed that federal lawsuit today. They claim emotional distress that they suffered during the now discredited rape case against three of their teammates. This the lawsuit names Duke University, the city of Durham, and several police officials. A lawsuit against the former Durham County prosecutor is also in the works. This evening, the United States is condemning an attack on the U.S. Embassy in Serbia. Protesters broke in and set fire to the building. They're upset with the U.S. support for Kosovo's independence. A burned body believed to be that of a protester was found inside the U.S. Embassy. This violence follows a peaceful protest by hundreds of thousands of people opposing Kosovo's independence. The British, Turkish, and Croatian embassies were targeted today as well. China is blasting last night's shoot down of a failed spy satellite in space. The U.S. Navy launched the missile from a cruiser and successfully hit the satellite. The Pentagon says the satellite contained a potentially hazardous <laughs> fuel, so it needed to destroy it, and there's the hit right there. 
However, China has filed an official protest. It says it wants to be told well in advance about any drastic moves that the U.S. plans to make in space. A lot of cleanup going on in Nevada for residents there after a strong earthquake. It was a magnitude 6 and it hit around 7 o'clock this morning. Take a look at what happened at a casino. Liquor bottles all over the floor fell right off the shelves, including 800 pound slot machines that came right off the wall. Local police say three people received minor injuries. The earthquake was felt as far away as, Oha, as Idaho. It does not look good for Drew Peterson, the Illinois police sergeant whose wife has been missing for months now. That's because experts have determined his previous wife was murdered. A forensic pathologist says Kathleen Savio died in 2004 from drowning. The initial autopsy ruled her death accidental, but authorities exhumed her body when Peterson's fourth wife, Stacy Peterson, went missing. Peterson has denied any involvement in either case. Stacy Peterson is still missing. An Iowan man posted a Dilbert comic strip, you know, Dilbert. Mm -hmm. He posted a comic strip to lighten the mood at work, and he ended up getting fired. Mm. Happened in October, and you could say it backfired. Employees at the Catfish Bend Casino heard that there would be layoffs coming. Well, David Stewart posted a Dilbert cartoon that referred to bosses as drunken lemurs. <laughs> the upper management considered it an insult and didn't think I should be able to insult him and called it misconduct. Stewart was then fired, and then the casino tried to deny him unemployment. But a judge sided with Stewart in an appeal. So we got to post the comic strip and get his unemployment. Yeah, and drunken lemurs, it's funny, you know. And apparently the, uh, the, the comic strip writer, owner, whoever does that, has uh, befriended him. So you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. Should I be quiet? I haven't, see, I haven't seen any of those around here. <laughs> no. No. Coming up next, a piece of history at the top of a church in Avon. The steeple was the place where they would hide runaway slaves. Next the history of the Underground Railroad right in our backyard. Friday's coming. We got some snow in the forecast for a select few. Take a look at the uh, Weather Almanac. We'll be back after a break. Your business where the people are. RochesterHomePage.net. One click away from limitless opportunities. RochesterHomePage.net. Say goodbye to the same old furniture. Come into Raymore and Flanagan for a great buy. Sit back, relax in your new living room, watch your favorite movies by the fire, redecorate with a cherry finished dining set, or find tranquility in your comfortable new bedroom. Take advantage of great buys and pay no money for one full year. With Raymore and Flanagan, it's easy to say goodbye to the old. Come in now through Saturday, 9 p.m. for your great buy. I work now from the Stormwatch 8 Weather Center. Here's Chief Meteorologist Scott Hetzko. It is a winter without sizzle. Where's the beef in the snow department? When is the big storm coming? Yeah, that's right, Maureen. We start strong here. Take a look at Duntire Storm Doppler. Nothing going to happen from this guy. It's another one of those uh, really sissy storms. No big deal. Uh, some light snow creeping north, and I've been asked here by the guys that work here, what is that stuff around Buffalo? The answer is nothing. The stuff you want to look at is the darker blue to the south. It is very slight snow. Again, not a big deal. Tomorrow morning, your first forecast, there will be some light snow south. Really only southern tier flurries here. That's going to be about it. We'll be in the neighborhood of 30 during the afternoon on Friday, mainly cloudy skies. And again, the further north you are, the less you get. You can see that right here on our snow forecast through the evening. I think only a trace to an inch, pretty much city down to Route 20. Further south you go, maybe a one to three inch snow. Extreme southern Livingston County, northern Steuben and Yates, two to four inches down as you cradle the uh, Pennsylvania border down near Wellsville, perhaps has the best shot. But again, two to four inches over 12 hours is not really anything you can't handle. We show you this area of low pressure centered over Cincinnati, moving quickly on a west to east flow upstairs in the atmosphere. So it's not going to last. It's not going to employ any more moisture. And there's a lot to the south to get. Man, if this thing were more of a big storm, a more uh, energetic storm, perhaps it would throw a lot of this moisture north and we get a big old nor'easter. That is not the case tomorrow. What is the case tomorrow? Cold air in place. Take a look at it tomorrow morning in the upper teens here area wide. Look at the time as we go through the afternoon as we show you the future. 
through the afternoon hours. Low 30s, Henrietta at 4 o'clock, upper 20s across the uh, Finger Lakes. More light snow to the east as well. And even by Saturday morning, starting out in the 20s, on our way to a Saturday in the low 30s with afternoon sun. Oh, won't that be nice? So back here tonight, it is a milky moonlit sky. And again, only some light snow well south of town. You saw it on radar and you can see the clouds going across the night sky. Moonlits, full moon out there for tonight. No lunar eclipse, sad to say. Only flurries here tomorrow for the most part. Further south, you must go to get any accumulating snow tomorrow. After your sunrise and sunset times, we will proudly present the next seven days of your life in living color, perhaps on an HD TV. So on Sunday, we're talking mid 30s, fair amount of sunshine. We will be in the upper 30s on Monday. Clouds increase and in our next storm system that will be more energetic and more strong, shall we say, with a lot more, a lot more moisture with it. Meaty, yes. Mm -hmm. We'll have a hodgepodge, a potpourri, uh, mishmash, if you will, of sleet, freezing rain, yeah. snow, and all that junk. You and got you out the uh, the dictionary tonight. I broke it up. I tried to increase my my hodgepodge? my mishmash. scope of language. Mishmash. Okay. Hodgepodge. Meaty. Hefty. Powerful. Shenanigans. Thanks, guy. <laughs> Coming up next, an underground railroad stop in Avon that's actually quite a ways above the ground. We'll show it to you. Here's the fuel finder. We'll be right back. I used to spend way too much time counting and not nearly enough time living. South Beach Living brings you mouth-watering food that fits your healthy lifestyle, like our protein-packed cereal bars and meal bars. Try Living, South Beach Living. Want a good night's sleep at a great price? Get to Raymore and Flanagan's Mattress Markdown Sale. Right now, save $100 on Sealy Posturepedic Firm Plus your Pillow Top Queen Mattress Sets, just $4.99 with free next day mattress delivery, free setup and free old mattress removal. Visit a Raymore and Flanagan Sleep Center today for the largest selection of Sealy, Stearns and Foster and now offering Tempur-Pedic mattresses. Here's another Swap Your Ride story. Real people experiencing Ford and telling it like it is. My name is Andrea Carmache, and I swapped my Nissan Murano for the Ford Edge. This was cool, and I liked the deep compartment. One thing I did really like about the Ford Edge also is the horsepower, the pickup. Man, as soon as you hit the accelerator, the car would just take off. It's a great ride. Now, lease a well-equipped Edge for just $2.69 a month. That's just $2.69 a month. Colonial. It's the one time of year the window and door experts become the savings experts. It's our midwinter sale, the best savings of the year. You'll save hundreds, maybe thousands right now, and even more with no payments, no interest financing for one full year. Higher standards, lower prices, and no payment financing for one full year. Rochester Colonial, your window and door experts. Saturday, it's Macy's One Day Sale with great savings on fashion, accessories, home, and more. Shop early, shop late. Macy's One Day Sale this Saturday with a preview Friday. This is News 8 Now at 11. Well, tonight we've got two stories that celebrate Rochester's African American heritage. First, for a long time, the old tunnel underneath the church in Avon, which was thought to have been a major line on the Underground Railroad. But it turns out that's not quite the case. News 8's Megan Backus tells us about the truth behind this myth. Folklore was that, oh yeah, the Underground Railroad ran under the church in East Avon. Fact is, the tunnel under the First Presbyterian Church in East Avon has nothing to do with the Underground Railroad. History lies above ground where routes 5 and 20 meet Route 15. The steeple was the place where they would hide runaway slaves. Reverend Dr. Tom Taylor says they would be some of the pillars of the community in the mid-1800s. The Tainer family lived in this house across the street from the church where this car dealership now sits. They helped fugitive slaves by keeping them in their own home and in the steeple, what appears to be the perfect hiding spot. There are views from the windows uh, going south down 15. They could see a, a bounty hunter party coming uh, up the road. They also, there's a window that also looks directly over where the Tainer house was to the west. 
Historians believe runaway slaves had keys just like this one inside. That way, if bounty hunters showed up, they'd be able to take the key, turn it upside down, put it in this hole, relock the door, then get out of here safely before the church caretaker showed up with a set of keys. It's that key that may have finally unlocked the truth and led historians to the steeple on this little brick church in East Avon. To hide away, but also be able to observe what was going on around them, which makes a lot more sense than putting them down in the basement where they couldn't see anything. And where they wouldn't be able to escape to freedom. In East Avon, Megan Backus, News 8 Now. It's being billed as a local museum on wheels. This is a green and yellow bus, and it's a 1955 GMC. It's close to the one Rosa Parks was on when she made history by refusing to move from her seat. That touched off the Montgomery, Alabama bus boycott, one of the crucial parts of the civil rights movement. Inside this mobile museum, you can listen to audio clips from Parks and Martin Luther King Jr. and watch video from that time period. School board member Van White says this unique museum is a great way for everyone to learn about our country's history. I think that education is the way, the means by which we fulfill the American promise. We educate ourselves about the good parts about American history, but also about the bad parts of American history because it makes us appreciate the beauty of this nation. If you'd like to take a ride on the bus, just take a visit. You can call the Center for the Study of Civil and Human Rights Law in Rochester. The number on your screen, 585-271-6780. The photographer who uh, shot that picture said it was fascinating to be on board the bus, so go out and see that. It's probably really a great, great adventure. And in sports, girls hoop highlights tip off our round ball roundup. And what Section 5 hockey team makes it to the finals? Find out next. Time is running. Now, News 8 Sports with John Kutchko. Great to have you back. Two big high school hockey games tonight. Four teams, only two can make the Class A Finals. Action from ESL Sports Center. We begin with Fairport taking on Pittsburgh tonight. Fairport was up to zip in the third. David Richards, a slap shot deflected in by Brad Jamison. Three nothing Red Raiders. Then on a power play, Fairport was Cameron Nichols in the slot. He scores, makes up four nothing Raiders. Another power play for Fairport. Ethan Whitcock gets the puck in front of the crease. He scores and Fairport goes on to win, posting the shutout, 5-0 the final. The other Class A semifinal, Grease Thunder taking on Aquinas. A scoreless game in the second. Watch the effort here by Philip Lane. The concentration stays with it and scores 1-0. A beautiful goal there. Then in the third, still one zip. Lane again, another score. That's all they needed. 2-0 the final. Grease Thunder advance and win. Two zip the final there. A round ball roundup. Showcases sectional girls action tonight. We begin in Class A. Quarterfinal action. Menden home to Palmac. Palmac, Sarah Diacogenis. A three pointer here. Nothing but net. But Menden answered back. Carly Napier led the scoring with 23. Three of those points right there. And Menden advances, winning 78 39, the final in that one. Also in Class A, Sutherland against HFL. Sutherland on the move here. Kaylee O'Keefe from outside. She hits a three. Honeyoy Falls Lama too much though. Nicole Terwilliger leading the break to Beth Allport. And two off the glass. Then later on it's Jessica Petruchik from three point range and she knocks this one down. HFL advances winning 55 to 38. Class B quarterfinal action. Leroy taking on Nazareth. Janine Swanson under the backboard for two here for Nazareth. Leroy, the Awakened Knights would counter though. Riley Condodorio brings the ball up the court, stops and pops in the lane for two there, but Naz was too much. Alyssa Santos from beyond the arc for three, and Nazareth advances, winning 65-33, the final in that game. Other girls scores. Odyssey, a winner over Byron Burgeon. Livonia wins at home. School of the Arts advances, beating Batavia, and Newark ends Victor's season. Razor Sharks home at Blue Cross Arena tonight to Maryland. James Reeves lost the handle, got it back, finds Sammy Monroe, and the slam here. Sharks took the lead in the first quarter, never looked back. Keith Friel from three point range. He had a game high 22. Sharks have now won 43 straight at home. They're 11 and 1. They win 125 to 106 in a halftime, actually led 70 to 39. 
such an impressive score that Kevin Doran called me all excited on the phone with that one. After a stunning comeback win last night, the Sabres crossed the border tonight to face the Leafs in Toronto. Two minutes into the game, off the draw, Brian Campbell, look at the bullet shot right there, 1-0 Sabres. Move it to the second, Sabres on a power play. Yero Spacek from long range, 2-0 Buffalo. It was 2-1 Sabres, still in the second. Alice Kotelik makes it 3-1 Sabres, a three goal third. Watch a pass here, Thomas Vanek, who had that hat trick last night to Derek Roy there. Sabres go on to win 5-1 the final there. Less than two weeks after nearly losing his life in Buffalo, Florida Panthers forward Richard Zednick talked about his ordeal today about severing his carotid artery against the Sabres 11 days ago. When I was in Buffalo uh, in the hospital, I was, you know, I couldn't sleep at night. I was thinking about it, you know, like, oh, why is this hap happening? There must be some reason, you know, oh, what, why is this happening? Uh, uh, like I said, now I'm enjoying every day and I'm happy to be here. Lucky to be alive. In day two of the World Match Play Championships, Tiger Woods had a lot easier time than he did yesterday. Tiger matched today against Aaron Oberhauser. And Tiger with the approach on the fifth. You know, yesterday it was his putting game that got him the victory. How about this? Almost put it in the cup. Won that hole. Tiger won the match on the 16th to advance three and two. Next faces Aaron Badley as the field has been narrowed to 16. One guy who will not see any more action, Phil Mickelson. That's him on the right, watching, watching Stuart Appleby close out the match on 17. Lefty is done as Appleby wins two and one, the final in that one. I want to invite you to come out tomorrow at six. TC Hooligans and Webster has some nachos, too? iced oh. tea. We'll have a good time out there. I'll be broadcasting live as I do every Friday. Yeah. Thanks, John. It's very kind of you okay. to invite us all. That's the guy. Coming up next, the tallest man in the U.S. can't get a good night's rest. Yeah, where do you find a bed for a guy who is 7 feet 8 inches tall? We'll tell you where. Truckers told us to give him a heck of a truck. He told us not to pull any punches. So we gave them a big engine. Big towing, big frame, and big brakes. What'd we get out of it? A big old pat on the back. The 2008 Motor Trend Truck of the Year, the Toyota Tundra, the truck that's changing it all. Switch to Time Warner Cable and get the products you want most. Home phone service, digital cable in HD, and Roadrunner High Speed Online. All together in one affordable package. It's simple, and it saves you money. In fact, the more you get, the more you save. Call now and switch to reliable home phone service. You can talk as much as you want and not pay extra. Bye-bye, phone company. Get digital cable with new releases available on demand every day. Plus more free HD choices than satellite. And free local channels and sports in HD. And race through the internet at lightning speed with Roadrunner High Speed Online. Get them all now on our advanced fiber network. Want ease and convenience? You should get what you want. So call Time Warner Cable today for three outstanding products. All from one company on one simple bill at one low price. Switch to all the best and get digital cable, high speed internet, and home phone service together. Packages starting at $99.95 a month. Call now. Time Warner Cable, the power of you. Vision Hyundai Henrietta 0% financing makes it possible to upgrade your one to five year old vehicle to a brand new Vision Hyundai that is at, near, or even below your current payment. Upgrade today. Get more options. America's best warranty. Oil changes for life. At, near, or even below the payment you're making on your old car. Upgrade today at Rochester's number one selling Hyundai dealership. Vision Hyundai Henrietta. Daily number from the New York Lottery is 935 and your win floor is 2543. Right about now, you may be thinking about hitting the hay, but how would you feel if your feet stuck out over the end of the bed more than two feet? I'm not good. Well, that's been a problem for George Bell most of his life. He's the tallest man in the United States. He stands a staggering seven feet, eight inches tall. And as you can see, he's a sheriff's deputy, works for the Norfolk City Jail. Well, yesterday he got a special gift, a custom-made bed frame and bedding that matches Bell's tall stature, and it came from Paul's Tall Mall. I'm very grateful, just for the fact that there is a place that can accommodate a person my, st my stature. Oh, it's a nuisance. Your feet come off the end, the sheets get kicked off. 
By the way, the owner of Paul's Tall Mall is six foot eleven. He has sold items for tall people since 1990. He doesn't look six eleven next to the guy who's no, seven eight, though, does he? he looks like seven a eight. Shrimp. That's what is that? Ninety two inches. That's like two Kutchkos. Oh. It's like at least two countries. Yeah, and he's yeah. not here to defend Oh, he's over there. He's going to throw something at me. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> I am here to defend myself. Okay. He's about as tall as me. I don't know why we make Cutsco jokes. All right, take a look at the weekend. I'm taller than John. <laughs> Mid-30s on Sunday. <laughs> Lots of sunshine. All right, one and a half Cutschkos. I'm sorry. Okay, thanks. <laughs> it's Back thanks, on John. track. Back on track. <laughs> David Letterman's coming up next. Have a good night. Be a part of the News 8 Now team. For breaking news, call pound 888. A free call on your Verizon wireless cell phone. Pound 888. Connecting you to News 8 Now.